Well, good morning. Welcome to Shepherd Drive Baptist Church. We're so glad that you're here. We're still looking forward to the time when we can meet physically once more, but until that time, we're so glad that you've been able to join us for virtual church. And can we encourage you to access virtual church uh, from our playlist? You can access that from the homepage on our website. There's a box on the homepage. If you click on that, it will do all the hard work for you and take you through the playlist in its entirety. And let me encourage you to have a good look at our website too. From that, you'll see our aims as a church, which is to share the word of God and the love of God with the community that we serve here in Southwest Ipswich. You'll also see that we're a real mixed bag of different people from different situations and countries and backgrounds, but united by the Lord Jesus Christ and by our purpose, which is to live for him faithfully. And let me also underline that we really do mean what we say on our sign there, that everybody is welcome. So we hope you'll feel very welcome and very much at home with us. So do come and join with us now. Well, good morning. Welcome uh, to our virtual service. It's good to have you with us. My name is Simon. I'm one of the ministers here at Shepherd Drive, and I'm going to be leading the first part of our time together this morning. And then Pete, our other minister, will be bringing to us a part of God's Word and explaining its message for us for today. If you're here for the first time, do take a look at the various pages of our website and get to know us, who we are, what our aims are as a church fellowship, and what we believe. And as a starting point, you might find it helpful to look at the Christianity What's It All About section of our website where you'll find a number of great resources and videos to help you find out more about who Jesus is, why Jesus came, and why that matters so much. Uh, some other resources are also available on the outside of the church. We have some uh, weatherproof book slots which are just near the entrance. Uh, there are some books and leaflets there explaining more about what Christian faith uh, is all about. So please, if ever you're passing the building, do help yourself to those. They're completely free and you're very welcome to take one or more than one. Let's start our time together by hearing from God's Word. Over these summer weeks, in our look into the book of Proverbs, we've been looking at the issue of wisdom, what it means to know the wisdom of God, what it means to follow the wisdom of God, and also we've been seeking to understand the pitfalls of not following the wisdom of God. Well, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Colossae, and he tells them what he's been praying for them. And it would be good for us to pray for the same things as God's people today. So let's hear from God's word as Paul writes. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. Well, with those great words in our minds, let's come now to prayer. Let's pray. Our great Father and Lord, we thank you and praise you that you are a great God, a great God of power and majesty. You are the one who created the world and the universe simply by the power of your word. You are the one who maintains the universe and who keeps planet Earth functioning. You're the one who brings galaxies into being and sees all of space and time and history, controlling it and coordinating it. You are far beyond what we can think, imagine, or fathom. And Lord, we praise you for your glory and your greatness. And yet, Lord, we see in your word that you are also a God who describes him for himself as our Father, a God of incredible love, a God who tells us that every human life to him is precious and important and valuable, a Father who cares very deeply about our lives and about our choices and about our decisions, and a God who wants what is best for us. And Father, we want to thank you that you make your wisdom available to us freely. And we would echo this morning that prayer of the Apostle Paul's. Our prayer is that you will please give to us greater knowledge of your will, greater spiritual wisdom and understanding, 
so that the way we live will always honor and please you and so that our lives will over time increasingly produce the fruit that you call us to grow and we pray too that we will grow to know you better and better and that our hearts will grow to love you more and more that we will be people who live thank lives of thankfulness for the amazing grace that we have received and who clearly reflect the light that you have shone into our hearts and we pray these things in the name of the lord jesus christ amen well now i'm going to hand over to christine who's going to talk to the diggers group good morning everyone hope you've had a good week i don't know what you've been up to but i hope you've had lots of fun it's still the summer holidays isn't it i don't know if you can remember two weeks ago simon showed us his fancy swim shorts we're not gonna lose him on the beach are we and he showed us his picnic basket and that reminded us of how our father god provides us with everything that we need to live for him now i want to follow on that holiday theme and show you my lovely spade look at this I know you can guess what I do with this. I love going to the beach and I love building sandcastles. Have you built sandcastles over the summer holidays? Do you know, I expect there have been sandcastles built all over the world this summer. I expect that lots of people have had great fun at the beach. Here are some pictures of sandcastles that people have made, aren't they amazing? Do you know, sandcastles are built every year in the summer holidays. People often go, don't they, to the beaches and build sandcastles. I want us to be reminded today about how God is building his church. God has been building his church for years and years and years, and God is still at work building. We have learned this week about how there are people in Zambia. That's a long way away and God is building his church there. <clears throat> and we know about our brothers and sisters in Japan. That's a really long way away. And God is building his church there. How wonderful for us to be reminded that God is at work in all parts of the world. Shepherd Drive, which is our church, is not made up of the bricks, is it? It's made up of the people. And just like God is building his church all over the world, it's all over the world with people. How wonderful for us to be reminded of that and to pray for our brothers and sisters all over the world. And how wonderful for us to know that even though the coronavirus is going on, God is still at work and God is building his church. I hope you have a really good week. It was lovely to see some of you at the Diggers Zoom last Sunday. The next one is going to be on the 6th of September and it would be lovely for us all to meet together on Zoom again. Take care, lots of love, bye. Thanks, Christine. Well, let me share with you now a few notices. Uh, firstly, just to underline that there are no Digging Deeper groups this week as we have one of our world famous Shepherd Drive quiz nights which will be running by zoom once more uh, the quiz night will be held on tuesday evening it will be starting at seven o'clock and if you're able to join with us can i ask you please to either contact adele or myself and we'll be very happy to add your name to the list of participants and include you in that evening which promises to be a really great evening of fun and togetherness uh, just to underline too that our digging deeper virtual groups will be restarting tuesday and wednesday evening during the week commencing the 31st of August and then on the coming Sunday we'll meet again like this so please do join us again for virtual church and by the time we broadcast this children's resources and JCB worksheets should be available to accompany our service this morning if you're not currently on a circulation list for any of those resources but you would like to be do please uh, let us know and we'll be very happy to include you well, let's come uh, to prayer again to remember and reflect on some of the things that have happened in our country this week and some of the prayer needs that we've been faced with. So let's come to prayer. Father, in many ways it's felt like a turbulent week, a week in which the effects of the virus have been felt in different ways, in the economy, in also in education. We recognize that for so many young people and their families, it's been 
uh, a very difficult time of uncertainty where their lives have suddenly been disrupted by changes in exam results and U-turns in government policy. And so, Father, this morning we want to pray for the young people of our country. We ask that in the days ahead their uncertainties will be replaced by certainty and clarity and opportunity. And we pray that the right opportunities will open up for students. And we pray that, Father, your wisdom will overrule in this situation. And we do pray for the young people of our country that they would search for purpose and meaning in life and that they would discover that in you through the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to pray too for our Prime Minister and Cabinet as they have to make so many difficult decisions. Decisions about the virus and how best to respond to its threat. Decisions about the economy and the recession that we find ourselves in and about schools and education. And we ask, Father, that in your mercy, you would give wisdom to those in positions of power and lead them very clearly and lead us as a country and as a world out of these difficulties. And we pray that we will continue to make real and lasting progress as we seek to reduce and contain the effects of this virus and that also good and rapid progress will be made in the search for a reliable vaccine to bring the protection that we need and that that vaccine will be freely shared with all countries and with all people so that the whole world can benefit. Father, we pray too uh, again for those who serve so sacrificially in the NHS and in care homes. We ask for their continued protection. We ask that you would strengthen them and help them with all the uh, pressure and tiredness that they experience. Would you please guard their mental health and their physical health. And Father, too, we want to pray again for those who mourn and grieve. We ask for your comfort to speak into the lives of those who've lost loved ones. And we pray for your help for those who are still feeling isolated and alone. Lord, perhaps as we begin to emerge uh, from the effects of this virus, we pray that we, we won't forget those who have suffered and who continue to suffer. And Father, we pray that you would open up opportunities for us uh, to serve you by helping them and by intervening and supporting those in need. Most of all, Father, we pray again that you would speak to our world through this crisis and that you would shape people's complacency and and apathy and that many may come to know your love and your forgiveness and the new life that you promise in Jesus for all who turn to you. And we pray this not only for our own country, but also for Zambia. And we thank you for the opportunity that we had as a fellowship to hear this week about uh, the work of Grace Baptist Mission in Zambia from Chris and Helen Hawthorne. We thank you for them as a couple. We pray that you would bless them and help them in this frustrating time where they are away from the uh, country where they want to serve you. We ask that you would Uh, make things happen so that uh, they're able to return to serve you there as soon as possible. But in this time of waiting, would you bless them and grow them? Would you guard them as a family and particularly uh, help their their children, we pray. And we pray that the work in Zambia to train pastors and students would continue and grow, even without Chris and Helen being there. We ask, Father, that you would meet the financial needs of that seminary, the housing needs the need for books and resources, and that, Father, you would grow churches in your likeness in Zambia, and that you would found them on the basis of your truth. We recognize all the different threats within that country, but we pray that the true message of the Lord Jesus Christ will grow and shine brightly and reach many people, and that lives and communities would be transformed. Father, we want to pray too for the work of CYM uh, as they contemplate uh, re-entering schools uh, and uh, colleges in the area. We ask that you would give them wisdom and that you'd help them as they face uh, perhaps difficult decisions about what to do uh, and where to go. We pray too that you would work through them and bring your grace to help students, students with uh, difficult questions, students uh, who are struggling. We pray that those members of COIM will be able to speak your truth and wisdom into the situations and needs that they are confronted with. 
And finally, Father, we want to rejoice with Julie, Sam, Dylan, and Jake at the safe arrival of grace. And we pray that you would please bless every member of that family. Would you please strengthen Julie as she recovers? And we pray that in time we'll have the joy of seeing Grace become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and that, Lord, she would do that from an early age. Father, for ourselves now, as we come to look into your word, would you please help us to understand and grasp its message? In a very real sense, we pray that we may have hearts that are receptive to what you have to say to us and that after hearing your word, you would change our hearts to make us different people people that you call us to be, people who come to resemble and reflect Jesus more and more. And we ask these things in his saving name. Amen. Well, Debbie has again chosen our songs this morning, which link in so helpfully uh, with the message from God's Word that we're going to be looking at this morning. Uh, we're going to be turning to Proverbs chapter 9, continuing to think about wisdom and foolishness, who we listen to, who we build our lives upon, and whether we uh, are putting our faith and trust in Jesus. Uh, those themes are reflected in our first two songs, which we're going to hear now, King Forevermore, and then In Christ Alone. Uh, let me encourage you to sing those at home, and then Roy, one of the members of our church here, will be reading the part of the Bible that we're going to be looking at together this morning, and then Pete will come and open up that for us and explain its message for us today. 